Hello, welcome back. Today what we're going to talk about is uh, doing some cute fluids on cats. So this is something that you can do when you know a cat is in chronic renal failure. Um, if your cat has been exposed to a toxin or something like that, this is different than if your cat has been hospitalized um, for something that needs IV fluids. So this is something that you can do at home. So I'm going to go through equipment first, kind of like what we always do. Um, show you how to put together a, a, a sub-Q fluid bag, line, and needle, and then go ahead and um, and then show you how to do it with a cat. So, uh, this is an IV line. I grabbed a 500 milliliter bag and an 18 gauge needle, okay? Um, so, when you open the needle, twist and that comes apart. To open this brand of lines, these peel apart, okay? And then there's a little strip holding that together. We're gonna peel that off. Another strip that's holding that together, peel that off. And then I always start with rolling this clamp down because that actually closes off the line so you can't you don't end up with any leaks okay perfect all right so that's about ready to use this brand of bag has like a little peel right there if if for whatever reason the bag has a little moisture in it that's okay they steam seal these so most of the time it's not because the bag is leaking, it's actually just because they steam seal them for sterility. So that, that's fine, okay. Bag, each of these bags, depending on the size, has a marker, 100, 200, 300, 400, rest of the bag is to the 500, okay. Uh, bigger bags, um, they end up being to a thousand, which is kind of cool. They also do have smaller bags that go to 250. Those are marked by 50 mLs, which is that works too. So we're gonna peel off one of those. These just snap off. <clears throat> With this spike that has a nice little cover on that. Don't be fooled, these are kind of sharp. Okay. So don't poke yourself. And then when you line these up. Make sure you line it up pretty good because you can accidentally puncture the bag, okay? So you're going to poke that straight through. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way so you guys can see that. Okay. Flip that up. Squeeze it so you can get a little bit of water in there. That's going to keep bubbles out of your line. And then you're going to roll that up. So you can flush the line, okay? We're gonna wait until that gets to the bottom of the line, and then we're gonna close that off, okay? I do realize most people do not have IV poles in their living rooms or in their houses in general, but that's what we're gonna use today. So, in lieu of using an IV pole, what you could use is a clothes hanger. You can use a hook on the back of a door. Um, you can use anything that can really go through this hook hole right here. Okay. Uh, anything that you know gravity is going to help. Okay. I'm going to roll on the other side of the table. So um, as you see, <laughs> my partner in crime here, who is being very helpful, is Daniel. He's gonna hang out here. So, <clears throat> there's a little blue cap on the end of this IV line. You're just gonna twist that off. And then we're gonna twist the needle on, okay? So that makes it so that you can just take the cap off and back on without taking the needle off, okay? All right, all right, child. <clears throat> all right, so when we do subcute fluids, 
What we like to do is we like to hit, do them between the shoulder blades and we like to make a little tent right there and that's where we're going to kind of poke. So, yes, I know. You have to come out of your little house there to help show people what we're doing. So you're going to go ahead and lift up so that there's like a little tent there. You're going to uncap your needle and you're gonna go ahead and aim forward so that you're not poking down. You don't wanna hit anything important. You're gonna poke and then you're gonna go ahead and unroll this so that it gives fluids. You're gonna give the measured amount whenever the doctor prescribes Watch your bag, okay? When you're done, thank you, Daniel, pinch where the needle is, where it's entered the skin, pull back, because depending on the size of the needle that you're using, um, you may see a little leakage, okay? Recap your needle, and that's it, okay? I do have handouts that go over this with pictures, explaining putting together the kit as well as doing the sub-Q fluids too. So if you have any questions or concerns and you're more of a written instructions kind of person versus a visual person, we can do it that way too. Um, if you're struggling, need some troubleshooting, give us a call, let us know and we can definitely walk things through with you. Um, other than that, thanks for watching.